Hi everyone, it's Elise with White Picket Vintage and I'm back today with another DIY video. Today what we're going to do is we're going to make over this plain white wood rolling pin into this beautiful antique looking rolling pin. This is a simple project and it's also an inexpensive one. I bought this rolling pin at a thrift store for $3. And in fact, I found three rolling pins at three different thrift stores all within about a three week period. So there's a little bit of a theme going on there. Uh, if you can't find one of these at a thrift store, I think you can buy these at Walmart for about $10. It's just a wood rolling pin, nothing special about it. Now alone, these can look nice in your decor, but if you make it, if you antique it like this, you can add some vintage charm to it very easily and very affordably. Finding these in antique stores are different matter and it might cost you $20, $30 a piece for these. They're kind of popular right now. So the first step in this process is to remove the clear varnish on this. They do that when they manufacture these so that it won't stick to the food when you're preparing it. But that causes a problem when you're trying to add stain to it because it can't penetrate into the wood. So to get started, we're going to sand this. Now, normally I would just say grab your sandpaper and get started, but I want to show you something else. This whole packet of sandpaper, and these are small sheets, but this entire packet of various grits of sandpaper was at, came from the Dollar Tree. Okay, and it's got grits from 80 grit all the way to 400 grit. So this is a very handy. Now, I will tell you, it says on the label that it has regular sandpaper and, and zenny. Zenny being cute back there for the camera. Zen, he said, Zen says hi, everyone. Uh, their wet, dry sandpaper, which is supposed to work in water, doesn't work in water. I tried it with one item and it immediately, all of the abrasive stuff just started falling off and getting all over my project. So if I were you, I would just use this strictly as dry paper. Um, we're going to use their 240. That's a pretty good grit for the project. And if you're not real familiar with using sandpaper, the way it works is the higher the number, the finer the grit. So when you have a rough surface that you want to get, you, you want to begin smoothing down, you're gonna use a very low grit sandpaper like this 80 grit. I don't know if you can see, oh, there we go. Got some light on it, there we go. This 80 grit. And then as you go up and you get it smoother and smoother, you're gonna use higher and higher grades of sandpaper. Now, when you're doing that, be careful because if you have something that's already fairly smooth, if you use a low grit sandpaper, you can actually scratch it and make it rougher by using that low grit sandpaper. So keep that in mind. So we're gonna use this 240 because this is already pretty smooth and all we really are doing is getting that coating off of here. So I'm gonna get started on that. It's kind of boring to just sand something on camera. Uh, oh, when you do this, you're also, you're gonna go ahead and uh, sand the handles as well because we are going to paint the handles and we want that paint to adhere to that. So the entire surface, even this little rim here, you're gonna get it all sanded down nicely. So I'm gonna do that and then when that's completed, I will be back. Stay tuned, bye-bye. Okay, that's all done and I'm back. So once you sanded this down, uh, you're very careful to get every little nook and cranny because anything that you miss, that stain is not going to soak in there and you're gonna have light spots. So be very thorough in getting this sanded down. And when you're done, you're just going to wipe off any of the dust with a rag, okay? This is, uh, this is just a piece of an old t-shirt that I have and it works great because it's nice soft cloth. Okay, and we're gonna get that all wiped down. And then when you're done with that, you're gonna get it wet. And then you're just gonna wipe it down again. It's okay if it's wet because uh, it, very soon we're going to add the stain and you want that to penetrate in. So if there's, and it is a water-based stain. It's, a, it's something kind of different. I'm gonna explain it when we get there, but it is a water-based stain. So it's okay if the rolling pin is a little bit wet. In fact, it's actually gonna be a good thing because it's gonna, that water is gonna go ahead and open that up so that that'll help that stain penetrate that. So we're just gonna wipe it down and get all that dust off of there. And this is a good opportunity 
to begin to see if you've missed any places because when you're wiping this down, if you don't see it getting darker where you've put the water on it, then you know that you've missed a spot in your sanding. You can go back and get that sanded uh, before we get to the stain stage. Okay, so get that all wiped down really well. Okay, after this, I'm going to pause the camera again for just a minute because what I wanna do is I wanna add some distressing to this. I'm not gonna do it on camera because it's loud and it's going to make the camera jump around, but I'm gonna show you what I'm doing. I'll show you the other pin and show you the marks in it. We are just, all we're gonna do, and it's, uh, there's no rules to doing this and you can't mess it up. But what you're gonna do is you're just going to take the rolling pin and you are going to hit it. Uh, let's see if we can get good light on that. And you're, you see the places that it's got marks on it? Those are places that I just smacked it with a hammer, okay? I used the back end of the hammer and I used the front end. I used the little corners. I just did, you know, wherever, whatever would make a variation in the marks. And I just hit it with that uh, just to give it a little bit of texture. So, like I said, you really can't mess it up. You're just giving it a little bit of uh, character, making it look like it's been around a while and it's been knocked around a little bit. So, I'm going to go ahead, take a break, and when I come back, uh, this is going to be a little bit distressed. All right, see you soon. Okay, I've got this distressed. I'm not sure if you can see the marks on it. It's a little bit more difficult without it having the antiquing on it but uh, the next step is where we start to stain it and the magic really starts to happen and you start to get that old antique look to it so to get started this is kind of a different way to stain and once you try this i think you're really going to enjoy it and find that it has a lot of uses but i've already mixed this up it's in here in this um, cottage cheese container and what you do with this is you mix vinegar and steel wool and you let it sit for a couple of days when you do that it's going to change into a stain that's kind of this uh, rusty brown color okay what you've actually created here is you've it's almost like liquid rust and it gets this nice dark stain but it's a water soluble stain and it also it, it, it's almost like it reacts in the wood or on whatever product you're putting it on it doesn't come out dark when you put it on it's almost like just putting water on it but then it darkens up over time and it will give you a very natural look to it it will begin to look like it, it's just darkened over time and you get these layers you get these runs and it just looks really nice it gets a real primitive rustic look to it so i think you're going to be pleased with that if you're going to make this all you do is you you use about a half a cup of vinegar and you drop in fine grit steel wool and it's just going to dissolve now this has bits in the bottom and normally what you would do is you would strain this you can strain it using cheesecloth or you can use a coffee filter to strain it and it's going to get these bits out of it see how it's got these yucky leftover bits in it and it's going to get that out but I didn't do that because I wanted to show you the bits. So, but what I'm gonna do, those bits do sink to the bottom. And since we're not gonna be using a whole lot of this, I'm just gonna dip my brush into what's on the top and I shouldn't have to worry about it too much. Even if it does get on the rolling pin, we're gonna be wiping things down and it should come off of there. So it shouldn't be too much of a, too much of a problem. But that's how you make it. You just put it in there, put the lid on, let it sit for a couple of days. And when it's done, you get this nice, um, this nice stain and I have uh, used this on a lot of different projects in the last week and I really like it okay so what you're gonna do from here is you just start painting the stain on now if you'll notice this isn't like stains that you're used to it's more like you're just putting on water and that is gonna kind of what it's gonna look like see how you don't really even notice it but it's gonna darken up as it reacts to the oxygen it is the best way i can describe it is that it's like rust so it continues to rust and get darker as it meets with 
air. Now see right there, you can already see where it's a little bit darker here and lighter here. So you get these overlaps, which is actually a really nice feature because it gives it that rustic natural quality, okay? And I know it seems like you're just putting on water, but where this drips, it is going to get darker. So you wanna be careful and wear some kind of apron or clothes that you don't mind getting painted because it will still stain them. Okay. And be careful on your table. Make sure you've got something down on your tablecloth. I mean, on your table uh, to protect it. Okay. All right. Now, right now, I am just painting the rolling pin itself. We're going to paint the handles in a color, and then we're going to put a little bit of this stain over it to darken it and make it look like the whole thing aged around the same time. So you can see you've already got this nice color to it, and it's already starting to darken up. Uh, it's going to get even darker. This stain has it's kind of multi-layered it's kind of hard to describe but you'll get this nice reddish brown look to it but then over the top it's almost like a gray haze so you get this kind of multi-layered look to it that's really really nice and gives you a great rustic look and you can begin to see where i distressed it you can start to see those places coming out on it already so it's pretty exciting it looks like i missed a spot here and let me get that again okay yeah and again, this is what's nice about this is you can't really mess this up. This took beautifully. Uh, the first one that I did, I actually had some places that didn't get sanded properly. And it didn't take the stain very well. And I had to go in and mess with it a little bit. So this is actually beautiful. Uh, it's drying already and it's starting to look really, really nice. So I will be back in about... 30 minutes and I will show you what it looks like when it's dry. Depending on how dark it is, I may put another layer on there. If I do that, I'll let you know. All right, see you soon. Okay, I'm back. This has had time to dry and it just dried beautifully and you can see how much darker it is. Now, I think that maybe this one didn't actually have a polyurethane coating on it because this stain just worked beautifully on it. It's not splotchy and, um, it, you know, the other one, you could see the other one had a lot of uh, lighter places and darker places. And this is just very, very even. Uh, I think for the rolling pin, having it splotchy is just fine. But this gives you an idea of what you can do with this stain on just a regular wood project if you want something that's more even. So I'm going to go ahead and wipe this down. Now I've got one more here. This is another one that I was working on. This one had a heavy polyurethane uh, seal on it. This one has, been, has given me a lot of trouble. If you notice, I don't know if you can see in the light or not, but in the places where I distressed it, down inside it didn't get darker, it stayed light. And I think what happened is I did the distressing before I sanded it. And when I did that, when I hit it, it actually you know, it still had that coating on it. And so now it's not adhering to it because then when I sanded it, my sanding didn't get down into that place where I, where I just distressed it. So that's a, you know, tip for you. Always do the sanding first, then do the distressing on it and you'll come up with a more even look than I'm, I'm getting here. But it, I think it's gonna be okay. You know, it's still a primitive look, so I think it's gonna be fine, but it's uh, not gonna be quite what I wanted, but I think it'll be all right. So I'm gonna work on both of these, but to start, um, we're gonna do this one. And the first step on this is you're gonna wanna wipe this down. Like I said, this is sort of like a liquid rust and it leaves kind of a powdery finish on it that is gonna come off on your hands. If you can see how much is coming off on my hands, it really makes a mess. So this is definitely not something you wanna leave like this uh, because you don't wanna handle it and constantly have this coming off on your hands. And also, I wanted to show you, remember how when we were putting this on, it just looked sort of like a dirty water and it looked like it wasn't gonna make a mess and I said, don't get it on your clothes. If you'll look, let me see if I can move this camera and show you this. This is the stain on my tabletop. It's a it's poster board that I put down, but you can see how 
that turned really, really dark. And so if you get that on your clothes, it, you may, it may just look like water, but then it's going to dry and you're going to have that stain on there. And that's going to be really, really difficult to get out. So just be sure that you're covered, you're wearing an apron or that you're wearing old clothes that you're not worried about it because it is kind of messy because it's so light. It just, it splatters very easily. Okay. So we're going to wipe this down and get that powdery coating off and it should start to, yeah, it's already polishing up a little bit just from wiping it down. Okay, so you really want to get that off of there so that when you're handling this, you're not getting that all over your hands. You don't want it coming, uh, coming off all the time. Okay. All right. Okay, so that just takes a minute, but gets that all cleaned up. So now it looks like this, and then the next step is to apply some wax to it. My favorite wax to use is this feed and seed, or feed, feed and wax, sorry. This is a really, really good product, and because it just ha it has beeswax, carnauba wax, and orange oil in it, so it's 100% safe and that's what you want if you're going to do a rolling pin if you ever plan to use this actually as a rolling pin you're going to want to make sure that it's food safe the stain you've put on it is all natural and this is going to be natural so you actually can use these if you choose to instead of just using it as a display so first thing we're going to do let's see i really want to i should have had a different Okay, well, we're just going to use this, and I'll get a fresh one uh, to wipe down the other. Nope, we're going to do it this way. Let me wipe this one down real quick. Sorry, I'm kind of kind of scattered with this project. Um, get this one wiped down, and then we'll put the wax on both of these. Okay. So, this is going to be, it's a little, it separates just a little bit. But that's okay. I... I really love this product. I use it for a lot of things. When I do my thrift store shopping, a lot of things are, they need conditioning. The wood is dry, leather's dry. This works for all of those things. I've used it uh, for a lot of different products. So it's, it's terrific. I always keep it in my arsenal. It's not that expensive. It's about six or seven dollars for that bottle. It lasts a long time. And uh, like I said, it does work for leather as well. Okay, so then you're just going to start rubbing it in. Now, if I don't know if you notice this, but the color's a little different on this. I don't know what wood this is. If you, this is the other one I did. And you can see the difference in the coloring. This one has a lot more red in the brown, and I'm not sure why, if it's just, and I think I just got oil on the handle, which is not good. Try not to get the oil on the handles um, because uh, they will not take the paint. So don't do what I just did. But this has got more gray to it. It's still a nice color, but it's just a little different color. And it's also more even. So basically, you're just rubbing this in. What you want to get is that appearance that this has been used to roll out pie crust and dough and things like that. And it's soaked up oil, food oils over the years. That's what old rolling pins look like. They've been used. They've been washed and they've gotten oil on them and they've been handled and... So they have that look to it. And this oil is gonna give you that look. And it's not usually this thin, but it's, it's separated a little bit. So it might actually be better on that to open it up, put it into some kind of container and stir it up a little bit, but okay. But it should still work. It smells really good. It smells citrusy and it just, works beautifully and being a natural product you don't have to worry about any chemicals in it okay and you see how that has darkened it up just beautifully and also given it a nice sheen okay so we're going to let that sit for just a few minutes and then we're going to come back and buff it a little bit. We don't want to get a super high shine, but you do want to have that nice sheen to it that you get from 
something old that's been cleaned up and buffed up many, many times over the years. So let that soak in just a little bit and we'll come back to it. In the meantime, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and paint the handles on this one. So I'm gonna show you what I did to paint the handles. On the other one, I used a green. I actually have some old kitchen tools and I pulled one out to get the, to match the shade of green. And it was a little brighter than I thought, but I was able to mix together a couple of green paints that I have. And then I also have a red one. So I found a, a paint that's pretty close to the red handle that I have. Um, it's just a nice bright, bright red. In fact, it may be a little more pink than I'd like, but I think once, before we're finished, we're gonna put a coat of that stain over the handles. And that's gonna tone it down just a little bit. So. Basically, we're just going to pour this, pour a little bit out. We're not going to need a lot. It's just a handle. Okay. All right. And using a small brush, we're just going to paint that handle. So it's pretty quick. It's not going to take very long to do this. That is definitely kind of pink. And I'm going to do a little extra on this one. I'm going to add some white into that little uh, into that little groove, but we're going to start out with just red at the moment. That is a very pink red. I'm not sure I like that, but if I don't like it, I can always paint over it. Uh, it's all right because we are kind of going for a chippy primitive look. I can sand it down and make it look like somebody repainted the handles and it's going to be just fine. Okay. The end. Oh, that actually looks really nice. That's actually a really nice color for that. Now that I'm actually seeing it completely covering the handle. I'm actually really liking it. Okay. All right, now down to the other end. About the only thing about this that isn't gonna look vintage is the plastic in the end. And I just don't know what to do about that. I've kind of kicked around a number of different options for painting over that but because it's plastic it's just not going to accept a lot of paint so i'm just not sure if you have any ideas let me know because uh I'm, I'm out of ideas on that one my what i'm thinking is maybe just an enamel paint or possibly even fingernail polish or something like that that would really stick to it but getting it in that little that tight little space without getting it everywhere else is what's going to be the hard part so I don't know. I, I That's why I just kind of left it and didn't address it. Hopefully if they're in a display, that's really not going to be that noticeable. And nobody's going to notice that it's not, uh, it's got that plastic there. If it's sitting in a basket or a canister uh, upright or displayed on the top of a counter, or you know shelf or something it's really not going to be very noticeable okay so now we got that one done all right now this is not i did not mix this up as chalk paint i left this just as the regular paint and the originals if you look at old rolling pins it's actually a kind of a shiny paint so that's the reason i didn't mix it up as chalk paint because i actually wanted it to be a little bit shiny so before we're done here i'm going to give this another quick coat it dries, it's not completely dry, but there's some places where it's very thin. It's more like a stain than a paint. I definitely want it to look like paint. Okay. And it's okay if it's kind of thick, because when you're looking at older, older items, they did put those on, they did put the paint on pretty thick because they wanted it to last. It almost looks like an enamel probably was an enamel. Okay. And is this one dry enough to repaint? Okay, we're just going to repaint it where it's kind of thin. Okay. 
And then we're going to let this dry and we're going to get back to the other one. And then we'll come back and finish up the handle. I'll show you what I do here. It's pretty simple. And it, but it's actually what really, to me, adds the finishing touch that really makes it look antique. Because you've also, you don't have just the the pin, but you actually have the handles looking distressed as well. And I think that's, uh, that's what really does the trick. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Now we're going to make both handles red on both of these. Um, but this one, I'm going to come back and I'm going to add a little bit of white on it before I'm done. I don't know if I'll do that on camera or not because I'm gonna have to wait wait for it to dry okay now this should be this should be dry now and let's go in and just there we go yeah just buff it just a little to bring out that shine I don't know if that's really visible on camera or not but it just it just brings out just a little bit of a glow to it and that's where we start to get Get it really looking like an old item it has a lot of oils on it okay and if it's not as it doesn't come up as shiny as you want you can add some more of the wax to it and do this again okay okay yeah that's beautiful and you can just see you can just see what a beautiful stain that is. That is lovely. And to think that that's really just vinegar and steel wool making a gorgeous stain like that. This is very, very nice. That would give you just a wonderful uh, primitive stain on a tabletop or something if you did that. It would look fantastic. Okay, so let's go ahead and go ahead and paint these handles also. I think I might need a little bit more paint here. And then once we get these painted, let me get this out of the way. I don't want to get paint on it. Put it over here. Once I get this done, then maybe that one will be dry enough to distress those handles. Don't want to end up with red paint on the rolling pin. Okay, so again, we're just going to paint this. And this is all going to be one color. I'm not going to have a second color on this one. And get down there and hopefully it doesn't get all over the rolling pin. Okay. Okay. Yeah, this is pretty simple. It doesn't take very much time to do this at all. But it is so worth it. It just adds that extra pop to it and as much as I love the whole okay I'm back and now it's time to go to the last step um, when I was painting I realized that I wanted to go ahead and put the white on it because I wanted to distress them at the same time so that it what we're going to do to it is going to age it all together which obviously is the way it would be if if it were you know really an antique item so i put the white on this i'm not real happy with the way it came out i think i picked out the absolute worst brush that i have in my entire workshop so it's very splotchy but hopefully once we put the uh, stain on it and we distress it a little bit that's going to calm down and i also got the got this one all ready to go and this is dry when you're doing this and it's time to distress the handles, you don't want it to be, you want it to be kind of dry to the touch, but you don't want it to be really, really uh, fully cured because then that's going to make it more difficult for the paint to come off when you're distressing it. You're going to have to really work at it. And then you're going to end up with more of a sanded uh, distressing rather than the chippy finish that you want. So for this, we're going to actually get back to using the sandpaper again. So, but you're going to use a very, very light touch on this. You are not going to press hard at all with your sandpaper. So you're just going to go over it very lightly and begin to pull off the paint in the, you know, just in the areas that, you know, are going to get, a, generally going to get a lot of wear and tear. So 
Okay, this is going to need a little bit firmer hand than I thought. Okay, so there we go. Now we're starting to take a little bit off the end there. Oh, there you go. Okay, so we're going to start to pull that off of there. Okay, this has already dried pretty hard, so we're going to have to be a little bit firmer with it than I thought. All right. Okay. Sorry about that. My phone ran out of space, and I had to move some files around in order to finish this up. So let's get back to this before this dries too hard. And I think it may, may already be there. This is definitely not working as easily as it did on the green one. So there we go. Now we're starting to get it coming off of there with a little bit of a chip to it. So that's what you want. You kind of want, because this, I have some old utensils like this because they get washed and they get wet, that paint will start to crack and chip off after a while. And so that's the look we kind of want to get with this. We kind of want to make it look like the real deal in the way that it would wear and stuff. Okay. All right, so forget what I said about a light hand. <laughs> this one is, I'm having to put a lot into this. In fact, I think I'm gonna go to a little bit higher grit paper and see if I can get a better result. All right. There we go. Now we're getting someplace, I think. And it's okay. You know, the standard is that you always sand with the grain, but on this, you can actually go both directions. And what that's going to give you is a little bit of a, the look kind of a cracking and crazing. It's not extremely noticeable, but I noticed it on the other handle that once that stain gets in there that it kind of creates the look of cracking so now we're getting there that is starting to look like a realistically aged handle the only thing we got to do now we've got to really get down to this bottom part we want to really take and this is where I really wish it hadn't dried so much because this is going to be difficult but you definitely, because the water, any water on this is going to drip down to this part and it is going to pull that right off of that bottom area. So let me get in there really good. I don't know if you can see me on here. Down in this area and just really scrub that to get that pulled off of there. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that is looking really good. Okay. So now we're getting somewhere. All right. Um, okay, this is really crummy sandpaper. <laughs> All right. Their black wet dry sandpaper is pretty crummy. Um, I would stick with the other sandpaper. This is getting, you can see the black gook all over here. It's just coming off. It's not going to hurt anything but it just makes a mess. All right, but that's what you get at the dollar store, I guess, sometimes. All right, now let's go ahead and get this. I'm gonna go ahead and do this since I'm running out of space on my camera. I don't want it to stop again. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this one up and then I'll be right back where I show you how we're gonna put the stain back over it and what that's gonna look like when it's done. All right, we'll see you soon. Okay, I'm back for the final step and I've painted the handles on this one and also on this one. Now I went ahead and did the stain on this one so that it would have time to dry so that I could show you what it's going to look like once the stain is applied. So after you finish the distressing on the handles, and I did, uh, I did find another little tip that I'm going to tell you about. If your paint is too dry, kind of like this was, you can wet it a little bit. 
and just uh, just with a damp cloth, just kind of wipe it down a little bit, let, let it soak in just a little, and then it'll start to come off a lot easier with your sandpaper so that you can get that nice distressed look on it. So once you've done that, the next step is to go back to your vinegar stain and put a coat on it and let it soak in and darken the paint just a little bit because you want it to have the same look that the rolling pin has in terms of you know having been handled and darkened by years of fingerprints and washing and food stains and things like that and also just over time that paint is going to yellow and age so you want to get that effect to it you don't want it to have that nice shiny look and that is resisting so we may it's kind of resisting that um i may have to go in and uh take off and maybe it got some of the wax on it so i might have to go in with a little bit of mineral spirit and clean that up in order for that to take but i'm going to go ahead and uh, put this on here we'll see how it takes and uh, but if you do run into that problem if you've gotten fingerprints on it like when I was talking to you I was handling it and I had the wax on my hands and that may have caused the problem so if you run into that you can use your mineral spirits just to go in and clean it off and to get that wax off of it let it dry a little bit and then you can usually go back in with the stain and it'll take on top of the paint just fine so basically that's all you do you just add another coat of the vinegar stain to it and if you remember when we did the rolling pin it didn't start right away being dark it was just like uh, almost like putting water on it and it was over t after time after an hour or so that it darkened so it's going to have the same effect here it's going to take a while for that to darken up but I went ahead and did the stain on this uh, and it still hasn't been very long ago but it's at least been about 10 minutes ago so that you can see that it's already starting to darken up. oh I didn't put my other light on no wonder it's so dim in here all right there we go Maybe you can see it better now. Sorry about that. Um, I turned that off when I was uh, working in here. Okay, so yeah, you can start to see that it's darkening up a little bit. And also, I was a little bit worried about the brush strokes and how bad that I had a terrible paintbrush for this. It looked, but you can see that once you distress it and you've added that stain on it, it starts to come together and it starts to look like it's really an old handle. So I think these look great and together these are going to make, a, these would look fantastic in a display and they look, they honestly look like old rolling pins. So this is a really good uh, project that you can do without spending a lot of money on. Uh, vinegar and steel wool, a little bit of wax. Now uh, I have this on hand because I use it a lot, but if you don't have this, you can use other types of wax. Uh, even, a, even a clear shoe polish would work, and a lot of people have that on hand already, so you could do that to it as well. And um, you can upgrade your house, add a little bit of a, an antique touch to your kitchen on a budget. Uh, okay, so that's all for now, and I will be bringing you another tutorial here next week. Uh, we're going to do a decoupage project, so if that's something that would interest you, please uh, select the bell so that you'll be notified of my new videos. And if you enjoyed this tutorial and you found it useful, please consider subscribing to my channel and like this video so that it can help me to grow my channel and I can continue to bring tutorials. Uh, to you that can help you to make great projects and do things on a budget to help upgrade your house and your decor. And uh, thanks very much for tuning in. I really hope you enjoyed it and I really hope you found it useful. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.